Well, everybody, and today we're going to be looking at Layakawan by El Greco. And this image is in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And now for a little bit about El Greco. He was born in 1541 and died in 1614, the same year that this image was actually painted. He was born in Crete, which is a small Greek island within the Cycladic Islands in the Aegean Sea. And when I think of Crete, I think of the Minoan culture, and that flourished there during the Bronze Age. And I always think of palaces like Knossos and how they were all centered around an open court. As a young artist, El Greco was trained as an icon painter, and icons are just holy images of Mary or Jesus, usually in cathedrals. And like so many other great masters who were not native to Italy, El Greco, which actually means the Greek, went to Italy in 1567 to kind of observe and look at the new art styles that he was hearing about. And also contemporary with El Greco, or even a few decades earlier, we have Michelangelo who's painting the Sistine Chapel, you have Raphael, and you have all these different great Italian Renaissance masters that El Greco wanted to study. And I'd also like to talk about how Ecro got the name El Greco. Well, his real name was Domenico Sietacopoulos. That was way too complicated for the regular Italian people to say, so they just called him El Greco, the Greek. And during his second stage or training as an artist, he actually trained as a Venetian artist. And I think that his paintings were influenced by the lighting of Tintoretto, um, for example, Tintoretto's Last Supper, and also the modeling of Titian. El Greco moved to Rome in 1570, but he finally settled in Spain in 1577. And he actually settled in Toledo, which is a beautiful city. And here you can see the landscape of Toledo, and especially the castle of San Servando, which is in many El Greco paintings. Toledo is also famous for harboring three dissimilar religions that still manage to coexist together, and those are Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And it was in this city that El Greco painted um, one of his last paintings, Laocoon. And it was really the archetype for the style that was developed by El Greco throughout his career, from his icon painting to Venetian painting and in his later stages. Now for the actual story of Laocoon and who he is, it actually comes from Virgil's Aeneid, which just describes the quest of Aeneas as he leaves the Trojan War and comes to Italy. Lacuan was a Trojan priest who was murdered as well as his sons because he warned the Trojans against accepting the legendary Trojan horse, but the Trojans kind of disregarded this crazy guy and they um, sent Poseidon, or Poseidon actually sent snakes from the sea to strangle Lacuan because Poseidon was on the side of the Greeks like Athena. This painting by El Greco, I think, depicts the most poignant moment in this fascinating tale. The snakes have risen up from the ocean, and the kind of distorted but also muscular body of Laocoon is very powerless on the ground, and with the snake about to bite his face. And I just love his expression as he's looking up, kind of accepting his fate. And also, I think one of his sons, who's gracefully wrestling with the reptile, is also very, it's very powerful when you look at it for the first time. I'd like to discuss next the bodies. You can notice they're twisting, overly muscular, and they have a ghostly hue to it, which is very characteristic of El Greco's bodies. And it's also characteristic of mannerism, which was a sophisticated art style that emerged just after the High Renaissance. And it really came about because artists didn't really know where to turn after the beauty produced by Michelangelo and Titian and Raphael and all these other artists. So they just took that um, artistic beauty that the previous artists had and kind of exaggerated it. And other, um, I guess, features of mannerism are bright colors, no sense of a real solid ground, there's awkward poses, elongated bodies, and radical perspective. So in this example you see here, you see these bright pastel blue and pink colors, and especially on the bottom, there is no horizon line or even ground line. And El Greco was really the pioneer of this movement, and when one thinks of mannerism, El Greco kind of, you think of him as well. El Greco got the chaotic bodies for his painting Laocoon, actually from another Hellenistic sculpture, and it was called Laocoon and Sons. 
And you can see here, it was created by Athenodorus, Polydorus, and Agisander of Rhodes, and is currently in the Vatican Museums in Rome. And I think the expression on this Lacan's face and also El Greco's Lacan, it's really incredible because I think they sort of adopt a Christ-like expression, although this is obviously a pagan myth. And in El Greco's painting as compliments for the dark lighting, the bodies are ashen and bruised looking, and El Greco used the dark blue for the muscular shading. And I'd like to draw your attention to the town that is depicted in the background. Although the city would have been Troy according to the Greek legend, the city that El Greco chose to paint was Toledo, which is where he was living at this time. And the notorious Trojan horse is shown in the shadows you can see in the background, right about in the middle in the center. And also you can see ancient bridges that are actually in Toledo, such as the Puente San Martin. Most of El Greco's later paintings feature Toledo as his background, but in my opinion, the figures in the foreground are really the center of attention, as opposed to El Greco's view of Toledo, which is simply the landscape of Toledo. As for the composition of this painting, there is a lack of perfectly straight, rigid lines, and the bodies seem to be undulating and very curvy, especially their muscles. And this composition heightens the emotional overtones in the image. I mean, these men are dying a brutal death, and I think El Greco really captures that emotion perfectly. So I hope you enjoy this painting. It's one of my favorites, and look for more El Greco works that we are going to be looking at next. Thank you for watching.